Okay, so here we are in DaVinci Resolve, right? DaVinci Resolve. Um, this is the video editor that I use. It is free. Everything I use is free, pretty much. I don't, I don't think I have, I mean, aside from physical hardware stuff, computer, drums, cables, all that stuff, the lights, um, everything computer related aside from the computer itself is pretty much free. The uh, DaVinci Resolve, I use a free version of that. I uh, haven't paid anything for it. It does great. Uh, Reaper, of course, is free. Um, even the, the one, that towel plugin that I use is free. So it, all this stuff is stuff you can just go download and install. The first thing you need to do here is actually, well, you'll open it up. You'll, you'll, when you open it up, it'll, it'll give you a little box and ask you what you want to do. And you tell it you want to start a new project. And you can name it whatever you want. Um, and then I need to bring in my media. This is the, the media pool here where I will right click and tell it to import media. And then it'll open up a basic file search window like anywhere else where you go to the directory where your video files are and where your audio file is. And you're going to bring all that stuff into here so you have it to work with. This is m way more files than I need, but this is every video clip that I imported on the day that I originally recorded that video. So I, I wanted to make sure I had it all here. Up in the top half, we're going to get a, uh, a view of whatever the video is doing. Down here, you've got a little split in the middle. You're going to have video files on the top half and audio files on the bottom. Now, when you put these uh, GoPro videos on here, it's going to drop an audio file from the GoPro on there too. And I'm going to show you how to get rid of those, but you definitely don't want them. So um, with these GoPro files, if you're using a GoPro, if you're using something else, it might be different, but they're usually numbered kind of consecutively. So usually the first file that you do in a day is going to start with GoPro, right? Um, and the rest of them are going to be GPO, something with a very similar number structure. Like this one's uh, GoPR0411, and there's GPO20411, so 411411, 30411, right, and so on and so forth. And those are my overheads. So that's actually the first one I'm going to drop, is I want the overhead to be on this first track. The next ones, they're going to build up from here. So the first one I'm going to use is the... GOP because that's going to be the first one. GP is later ones. GOP is the first one. So GOP, I'm going to come down and I'm just going to drop that right here on the top. Now you'll see that it also dropped the audio from the GoPro camera. Some people like that. Some people use that there and they use the peaks on this to sync their audio to it. I don't do it. So th that's up to you. But um, if you just click on the file and delete it, for summary, if you hit delete right there, it'll delete the audio and the video. But I'd click on just the audio because that's all I want to get rid of. Instead of hitting the delete key, if I hit the backspace key, uh, it drops that audio and I don't have to worry about it anymore. And it's all gone forever and ever. So now to zoom out, I can't just use the mouse wheel on this. That is one thing I do have to say is I like DaVinci Resolve fine. I like Reaper a lot. Um, Resolve is good, but it's just enough different from Reaper that it's a pain in the butt to go back and forth between the two of them. That some of the things do change. To zoom out, I actually have to use the zoom out button thing here. So I'm going to snap the cursor. Well, I'm going to try really hard to snap the cursor to the end of that track. Now, there should be a 10411, but maybe there's not. No. Oh, there it is. GPO 10411 is going to come right after that. And then 20411. And 30411. I can zoom out here. It looks like what I had back then. I didn't have the four GoPros then. I had two GoPros and a, a different camera. Now my two my two GoPros were the overhead um, and my kick drum. My other camera is was at the time a left shoulder view. I didn't have any other views than that. So uh, I'm going to look at my kicks, and I'm going to I'm not going to do the kicks next, but the kicks are going to go. Um, up here, they're going to be the third track, and I'll show you why in a second. The uh, I, I want to make sure and do the kicks last. So my next one, uh, I have actually two videos because this camera records a different length of video. No, I have one video, excuse me, um, and it's just this. So I should be able to drop that on there. Um, 
and maybe that's not all of it. I hope that that's it. I hope it is. You'll see. You see, it added us another. It, it went down farther and added an extra audio track down below the track that was already there. A video file went up. Audio file went down. Now I'm going to drop my uh, kick drum track in the very top here. So where's the R? There it is. G O P R. Blah blah blah. Kick drum. 0034 should be a 10034 and a 20034. Now you see I'm I'm lining these all up together over here on the edge, but the reality is that they won't really line up when I'm done. And the reason is because I had to start one of these recordings, then walk over to the next one and start it, then walk over to the next one and start it. And so there's gonna be some delay. I'm just I'm snapping them together, but in reality I'm gonna end up moving all this stuff around. First thing I want to do though is get rid of all of this stuff. I don't need any of these audio files. And if I scroll down, I'm gonna move this bar up, but I could scroll down and I'm going to get rid of all those. What I do want is the audio that I just made and I'm just going to drop it down here anywhere um, because I know I'm going to have to move stuff around. Plus this is all the video I recorded and if you remember when we first started with the audio tracks, the audio we used was pretty late in the recording but it, there was another song after it as well. So what I have to do here is just visually start dragging these around and lining them up. Uh, the way that Resolve is going to work is that it is going to default to playing whatever video track is on top. Um, to make it play a track below it, you can either hide that track, see how that graded out, I can hide that track or I can have a gap. If I were to make a gap right there, then you see it, it changed my view to the track below it. That's how I'm going to actually do my editing is I'm going to, from the top down, I'm going to cut gaps out of the stuff to change the view to whatever it is that I want to see. Uh, that's how I change my, my scenes or what have you uh, in Resolve. So first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to back up just a little. I better zoom in. It also likes to snap to certain distances um, and the distances are, are rougher when you're too close or when you're too far out. So I'm just going to look at that file and see if where it makes that change Right, it was unnoticeable where it made the change, so that was fine. All right, and I can see, I know the song that was after it, so I know that song isn't even a song that I need. We're, we're, we're past what I need at that point, so I don't even need this last track. I'm gonna click, click it and click backspace and get rid of it. Um, zooming out again, I'm gonna do, I don't need to do anything with this file because there's only the one file, right? Um, Tell you what I am going to do though is see how I've got these two tracks. I'm going to want to do some editing to these so that I can get my kick drum to be down in the corner or somewhere where you can see it when it's in this view. Uh, and I'm going to show you how to do that. But instead of having to do it twice or instead of having to do anything else, I'm going to highlight both of these tracks. I'm gonna, I've clicked one. I'm going to hold the shift key, shift key, and click the second one that highlighted them both. Now I'm going to right click on those and I'm going to go up here and I'm going to select. You can do new compound clip or new fusion clip. It really for, for what I've done, I've, I haven't noticed any difference between the two. I'm going to do a new fusion clip, and that joins them together. Right? So there's no more two separate clips. They are one clip now. They are forever joined as one single clip. So I've got that. Um, so for now, I'm going to actually kind of mute that clip so it doesn't do anything so I can just see the top clip. Okay, so that is also a different song. That's Lucretia. So I know that my track is long enough. Um, I know that this video track is long enough that it should have the video that I want. Now I'm not lining it up with anything yet. I'm just seeing that it's all there. So I'm going to do the same thing down here. Let me zoom in. Let me mute that second track so that I'm just looking at my bottom, which is the overhead. Overhead I always keep on the bottom. That's kind of my de facto if all else fails, I'll show nothing but the overhead because it's the one view that captures everything. So I just want to make, watch it and make sure there's nothing goofy going on in that change between clips and that it looks pretty seamless, which it did. Um, I have before accidentally dropped clips in the wrong order and you'll definitely know it when it hits that transition if that's the case. And you certainly don't want to join clips that are in the wrong order and then try to work with them. Um, and I'm going to do the same thing down here, although there's not much point. It's mostly, I can see from the fact that I'm choking a symbol that that's 
we're into a different song there. So I can get rid of this piece. I'm going to click backspace again, and get rid of that. And also looks like this piece out on the very end is going to be useless to me too. So click this, high, uh, shift, click the second one, right click, and new fusion clip. Okay, what I'm going to do before I try to line up the video with the audio, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try to line up all the video together. Um, sometimes it's easier to do, sometimes it's harder, uh, but you, too many times I've made things where I lined up each individual video track to the audio on its own. Uh, you would think lining up the bass drum to the audio is pretty easy because you're zoomed in on the kick drum. Um, but sometimes it's harder than other times. And sometimes you will have one track look, you know, the overhead might look like it's lined up and the kick drum track might look like it's lined up. But if you transition between the two at the wrong time, you notice a difference in the sync between the two of them. Um, and, and my videos still aren't great in that respect. Um, sometimes I'll have a video that looks great on my computer and as soon as I upload it to YouTube, uh, all of a sudden it's not synced up anymore. And that's a pain in the butt too. There's not much you can do about it at that point. I have gotten into the habit now though where I will upload something privately first where nobody else can see it and it doesn't get published and nobody's notified of it and I'll watch it to see if it's in sync. And then if everything's good, then I'll make it public after that because uh, I guess the last one that had major problems was um, Avenged Sevenfold, uh, Backcountry. Uh, there's a section in there right before a fill where there's a transition in the video, which is just a hard transition. It was just a, a frame change, um, and it dropped the frame, and it, it inserted a, a frame of black, um, and then everything was out of sync through the duration of the fill, and uh, until the next scene change where it went to a different view and then it lined back up again. I don't know what in the world caused it to do that. Didn't do it on my computer, didn't do it in media player, um, but for some reason on YouTube it does. So I would suggest when you get to the point of ready to upload something, upload it privately, watch it yourself, uh, make sure it's all square before you make it public. Because once it's public, you can't delete it. You can make it private again, but you can't delete it, and by that point, you know, if people have seen it and it looks really janky, then, you know, that doesn't do you any favors. So, anyways, so here we are. I have my video. I'm going to try to find something notable here. Uh, okay, I can tell from the video here that I'm still playing Helena. I don't know how long it's going to go. All right, there's the fill. Yeah, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to find where I switch over to playing a different song. And I think that's coming up right here because I was just feeling, yep, okay. So now we're playing Lucretia. So what I want to do is look at this video file and and that's playing Lucretia, but it's further into the song. So I'm going to try to back it up. And I'm actually going to try, if I can, to line all these up on the first hit of the new song, which in this case is Lucretia. So let's see what's going on there. Bump. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at, I think of my overhead as kind of my master track because I can see everything on it. So I'm going to switch to my overhead track. I'm going to watch it and I'm going to let it get close to that fill. And uh, I'm going to, uh, all right, so I just hit the first choke symbol in Lucretia. Um, my cursor right here, I'm gonna, I need to move it around frame by frame. So what I'm going to do is the, on the, the, uh, I guess the D pad, the up, down, left, right arrow buttons. If I just push left, then it's going to back that up by a frame. And I'm going to back up to before I hit it and I'm going to clip, go forward now one frame at a time until the symbol moves. That's where, see, I haven't hit it yet. I'm practically touching it, but I hadn't hit it. So one more frame. All right. Now the symbol's moving. So without doing anything else, I'm going to lock that because too many times I have tried to go to another track and thought I was moving that track and turns out I was moving my master track, my overhead track, which I did not want to do. So now I need to move this track to line it up with my overhead. So to move a track, now before I was just moving the cursor with a left and right arrow, now I want to move the actual track. So I'm going to use the less than, greater than signs, the little left kind of pointy arrow bit that is uh, 
if, if you're looking at the question mark, um, the question mark key on your keyboard, you got shift from right to left, shift, question mark, greater than, less than. So less than is like a little arrow that moves the track left, greater than is like a little arrow that moves the track to the right. And what I'm going to do is start, oh, see, I'm trying to move it, but it didn't move because the red is still on the track I didn't want to move. Yeah. So thank All right, so now I've selected the correct track and I'm going to try to move it. I think that that's still Lucretia and that I can uh, move it for a while there. I don't want to move where my cursor is because my cursor is lined up on the spot that I'm trying to use for sync. So, okay. So here we are. I think we're at the beginning of Lucretia. I'm, I'm, I'm using the uh, less than sign and I'm actually moving the track back to the left. Um, I want to go again to where that symbol first moves almost there uh, I think that's it um, <clears throat> man it, 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 right in between frames uh, anyway so I think now if I undo that that we're in the same place I can actually look at my hand shape whoops I can look at my hand shape and see yeah I think that's pretty much it okay so those two are, lock, are, are set up, I can lock that. Okay, so same thing with the kick drum because at the same time that I hit that cymbal, I also hit the kick for the first time in that song. Okay, so I can try to start lining up the uh, video with the audio. And to do that, I kind of need to find a spot that I recognize. All right, so you, you won't have exactly the same thing that I just had, but you'll, have, you'll be able to find something. There's usually something you can find that stands out that you can sync all your videos together with. And once it's all lined up, you, you'll see it's a pretty straightforward process to uh, go through and and do the editing, you know, set the scene up the way that you want it to be. Uh, it just, it, it's a lot of sitting here and going through stuff trying to get to that point. I don't think that's the right version of the song there. Um, <clears throat> mostly because I was listening to the cymbals and it sounded like I hit this one three times and then the video I hit two different ones or something. So anyways, let me get to the end of that. See where the next one starts. Okay, I started it again in there somewhere. So we saw a nice little flub there. Sticks went flying. So uh, that's obviously not the right one. When am I going to start it again? Okay, so I'm pretty close there, so assuming this is right. So I'm going to use the uh, move the track buttons, the greater than and less than buttons to, to move it around. Well, I went the wrong way though. Let me back up a little bit here. <coughs> okay, so. Oh, 
so close. Okay. Alright, so which is happening first? Alright, video is happening first, so the, video need, the audio needs to be moved to the left. Oh, almost there. Ooh. Oh, that feels pretty good. Looks right. I will say this though, if you remember when I was doing the audio editing and I talked about taking a nice long break before you do your finished uh, your finish mixing. I, I, I liked it when I was doing the editing. I commented on I thought it sounded better than the original. I liked the snare. Now that I'm looking at this and I'm hearing it, and this looks like the right version of the video. It looks like my correct playthrough of the video to sync with this audio. Um, and I hate the snare drum. It, it is way too loud. I need to back that off. It just sticks out way too much. Um, and it just sounds like the drums are overpowering the rest of the mix. It's been maybe an hour or two since I did that edit and it already, it sounds completely different to me. So I think I'm synced up pretty good here. Uh, if you notice that overrun in the video where it doesn't line up with the audio, sometimes that happens. Uh, DaVinci is a lot more resource intensive than than Reaper is and it will have problems at least on my computer where it'll stutter and I have to tap the space bar to pause it and tap it again to unpause it and it'll line back up again but that happens a lot. The more video you have the worse it is uh, the more if you're trying to do add transitions or you know cuts or stuff that that can cause it too but it is just something that I mean if you got a powerful enough computer it might not be an issue but I do have to deal with that occasionally. All right, so if you notice there, I'm hitting that symbol on the right and it's not making any sound. Now, I didn't adjust anything um, that would affect that in the audio mix. And I'll tell you what happened. And this is also something I should bring up if you're going to add a symbol. Um, because I added that symbol and because I added it on the floor tom rim, that means that when I record using the line outs, that is a China symbol in this, and that China symbol actually shows up as a sound on the toms track, not the cymbals track. Now, uh, when I record this before and any other time that I normally make a, a, a video, I have, if I use the China at all, I have to go through and find the waveform for the China wherever I hit it and actually cut it out of the tom track and drag and drop it up into the cymbal track so that it can be adjusted as one of the symbols, right? So it's like with its little family. Um, all the effects, all the, the volume level adjustments and everything that I do to the symbols have no effect on the China so long as it's in the wrong track. Anyways, I don't think that I adjusted the level of the toms at all in that mix. I was, you know, just kind of blowing through it. And uh, I think that's what happened. I think the toms are probably cranked down and so we're not able to hear that at all. We'll hear it at the fill. Yeah, that's super quiet, and that's why you're not hearing the China is because the China is already fairly quiet, and then it's going to get buried in that tom track because the tom tom track was was still left fairly low. I didn't do reverb, I didn't do EQ on it, I didn't bring it up in the mix at all. I didn't even listen to this part of the song when I was mixing. I would never do that on one that I was planning on putting out, um, but that's what happened. So, anyways, so the rest of it though, it looks like it's. Yeah, that looks like it synced up pretty good. So just to check, I'm going to start undoing some of these other tracks and see what they look like. That's, God, I hope that's good. Let me see. All 
right, I'll say that lines up. Now, what I'm going to do is I am going to go to the beginning of the track. I've got all these where they belong. I hope I'm going to use the razor blade tool. I can't split tracks pressing S anymore. Now I have to actually use the razor blade tool to cut them. I could um, go out here and grab the ends of them and drag them back to the cursor. I guess it doesn't matter which way you do it, but I'm going to cut it right there. And I can't because I've got all the tracks locked. So first I'm going to unlock, unlock all the tracks, then I'm going to cut all the tracks. Now I have to switch back to the cursor key, select each one of these, hit backspace, and that gets rid of it. Now if I find out that I, oh, I needed some more of that, I don't have to undo anything. I, it knows what material was there and I can extend it back end of the song if I really wanted to. So that's why I say it really doesn't matter. You could have, I could have drug that end up here instead of clipping it, but I'm going to be doing a lot of clipping anyway, so uh, it really doesn't matter that much. Now, remember my audio track had a lot of extra audio. Well, same still goes, so I'm just going to find the end of this song because uh, I'm not going to let the video run past the you know end of a fade out or something, so I'm going to get down to the end here. Or down to the ender. Ender the mat. See, it fades out for a bit there, though. But I will, I'm not going to cut it off before it finishes. All right, it's done there, though. So I'm going to do the same thing with those video tracks. And this time I'm going to do it with the audio, too. Just go ahead and clip it all um, and get rid of these pieces that I don't need. So at least now we're down to just the nitty gritty. We're down to just the stuff that we only want, that we really want to use, right? So now I'm zoomed way out. I only got three, five, three tracks to work with. If I had another kick drum, or, or I mean, not another kick drum, if I had another view, a right shoulder view or something, there'd just be one more, but it's the same process. Uh, click the top track, hold down shift, click the bottom track, it's all together. If this was still split into separate clips, this would be, you know, I'd have to select them all or whatever, but in this case, I was able to do that. And I want to bring it back to the beginning. Um, I don't want to have a bunch of dead space at the beginning of the video. I don't think it would anyways. Uh, I think this would start where the video starts, the video file starts, but um, better safe than sorry. So uh, first thing I'm gonna do, I know that I want to use the kick, I don't want the kick drum by itself like that, right? That's kind of crazy. So uh, now I'm gonna go over here to the transform, the transform tool. Now I wanna make sure I'm only, I'm not, I don't need to select all for sure. Um, so I'm gonna just select my top track which is the kick drum. Um, and it's too big too. I don't need to see the whole drum. We don't need to see all what's behind me. So first thing I'm going to do, so I'm going to go down here to crop and you got these tools over on the right hand side, right? Um, I'm going to use transform and I'm going to use cropping. I'm going to go down to cropping. I'm going to crop the left. I'm going to drag this over and just get rid, uh -oh, get rid of it just enough to where it's just up to the back of my leg. Crop the right until it's just up to that rim. You can just see the lugs a little bit. Crop the top down just a little. I don't want to cover up the Alesis logo. And it's not that I don't, you know, it's not that I want to see the Alesis logo, but it, the more cramped you make it, the harder it is to kind of follow what's going on. So I, I've always found it to be a little better. I'm going to bring this right up to the bottom of the pedal, but it looks funky if you, if you actually get rid of the pedal and you just see like your, your toes working or something. It's something strange about that. So uh, this is just how I do it. You do, you do you and, uh, if you like it a different way, then by all means, you can do whatever you want with it. Um, <clears throat> I'm also going to use the softness, but I'm not going to do it yet. I want to see what it looks like when I get it where it's going. Now, this at 100% is way too big, so I'm going to, you see this lock, X and Y are locked together. If I unlock that, I can stretch it out one way or the other, but I certainly don't want to do that for this video. So I'm going to squeeze this down, and I'm going to move it to... The left side, I always try to set up the camera so I've got a spot where I can do it without really covering up something else that I feel like is important. Uh, in this case, I can't really do that unless, I, I mean, I can cramp the, I can cut down, I'm covering up about half of the hi-hat and I really don't like that. Um, Cause it gives the impression that I feel like this is more important and, and it, to me it's not. Um, I don't want to make it much smaller, but I can crop it a little more. I can crop the right side a little more, um, <clears throat> and I can bring the top down probably a little bit. Ooh, there we go. You can still tell it's round at least. Um, you might choose to do it a different way, and that's fine. Uh, I like seeing the more of the drum there. I've tried cropping it down smaller, and I just 
it, it, it seemed harder to follow. It was hard to, it was like hard for me to visually keep track of what was going on with it that way. So anyways, now with the softness, uh, you can blur from the edge inward towards your, towards that, or you can blur out. I will typically, I think, blur out, but now it looks like I need to crop more because that, yeah, that looks all right. So, <clears throat> I mean, for what this is, I'm going to leave it like that. I mean, this isn't going to go on YouTube anyways, but uh, that blurs the edge, makes it blend a little bit. It just keeps it from having that really harsh line. If you like it with the line there, then by all means, you know, leave it on there. But this is just how I do it. Uh, that also seems pretty large, too. That's over half the vertical height of the, uh, of the full screen there. So I'm actually going to zoom that down a little more as well. That's probably good. And I'm going to bring my Y position down. Right, X goes this way, Y goes this way. Um, here is, let's see, now we've got... Now you see it trying to overrun. Uh, it's doing that because it's trying to comprehend the fact that it's got to show two videos at the same time. It will do it, but it, it's going to be, it might take it a second to... Okay, I think I normally crop it up on the left more to where it's just behind my knee. I don't, I don't keep it quite so, you know, yeah, I think that's probably more like what I normally do. And then I can actually position that a little farther to the left. And that gives me a little more, it seems small here, but on a big screen TV, that's still pretty freaking huge. So anyways, um, yeah, it's having to think about it again. All right, so we've got that. That's going to apparently stay there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, always show that anytime that I show this clip. Now, if I switch to the overhead, I'm going to I'm going to drop the kick drum because you can already see the kick drum in the overhead shot without the extra clip on the side. So. Um, if I'm doing a right and left shoulder view, it kind of goes either way. I've had some where I've had uh, the kick drum view included on the right shoulder and left shoulder. I've done some where I've just had it on the left. Um, I think I did one where I actually had you seeing the kick drum and the overhead, and that was what made me decide that that was a bad idea. Uh, so. <clears throat> Anyways, again, this is all up to however you want to do it. You can make, you can do all your views in one screen if you want, and because I, I can go through, I could take this screen and I could shrink it down, and I could take that one, and shrink it down. I could take all four of them and shrink them down to, you know, 50%, and then have four widescreen views all at the same time. Uh, keep in mind, a lot of people watch YouTube videos on their phone, so they, I think it'd get pretty tiny at that point. Um, so, I mean, that's up to you. There's a lot of stuff you can do just using uh, the zoom and cropping. You know, you can do that however you like. Anyway, so now I need to start actually looking at kind of a, the composition of the video because I don't, I don't want it to be all left shoulder and kick drum. I want to mix it up some. All right, so there's too much video at the beginning. Okay, so let me go back here a little bit, zoom in a little. I don't need all the, there's where the audio starts. So I don't really need much before that. Now, I do give, you know, a second or two of dead air at the beginning, because if you don't, a lot of times when a person loads a YouTube video, um, I don't want it to be, you know, the song already started by the time they start hearing it. You know, does that make sense? Um, sometimes it, it starts too soon and it kind of throws off the tempo of the beginning of the song um, to the listener, not in your video. But um, I do like there to be a little bit of dead air at the beginning. So what I think I'm going to do is I think I'm going to leave it overhead until we get to the hi-hats. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to take these first two clips and I'm going to drag them back to the cursor so that it starts with the overhead. And hell, this might be how I did it the, the last time. I really don't remember. Um, 
Now you notice how that transition was, uh, where it uh, came up and then I was already touching the symbol by the time that your eye, that by the time that you had realized what was going on. You can see I'm, I'm, I'm pointing at the screen like you can see my hands. You see where my sticks are. I'm already in motion getting ready to hit the hats. Um, be careful about doing transitions exactly on a beat or exactly on a crash. It, sometimes it has a tendency to look kind of funny when you do. So what I'm doing, I'm just using the arrow keys, not the greater than, less than. I'm just moving the cursor. I'm just going to back it up, back that cursor up until I'm... Okay, that's probably good enough. I'm getting ready to get ready to hit the hi-hats. And I'm going to drag these clips back up to the cursor where it is now. And hopefully that's a kind of a transition that's a little bit easier for your eyes to adjust to. Just like a horse, died again and again. All right, so that was a lot better. You, you saw it and you saw what was happening uh, without it just being kind of bam in your face, we're touching the hi-hats now. It sounds silly and it might not matter to anybody in the world but me, but it's, that's the kind of little stuff that I look at. Okay, I'm going to do another transition right there. So I'm going to clip those two. And I'm going to switch back to the overhead view. Again, I'm just doing two views, so, you know, you got to kind of think about how you want to do it. I mean, it's tempting to just say, well, every four bars, I'm going to go back and forth or whatever, but you got to think about kind of what's it, where can you see whatever's the most important that's going on. Uh, and in this case, there's not a whole hell of a lot that's important that's going on. And uh, it's just kind of getting into the groove of the song. So, I mean, overhead works just as well as anything. Now, again, this is a hard transition right on a cymbal crash. Now, I have to decide at this point, do I want to move the view of the cymbal crash firmly into the overhead view, or do I want to let the cymbal crash happen before we switch the overhead? And I think I want the cymbal crash to be a part of this, because the, I don't want to cut away from what's going on with the hi-hats. Uh, well, so let me go back to right after I hit that crash. and adjust there. So now let's see what that looks like. Yeah, I kind of want to catch it before the snare drum though. So there's like a little fine line there that I'm trying to hit. And every little step, I, I, I just moved the cursor back two clicks. That's two frames and every little frame, every frame makes a difference. Yeah, still not awesome. That might not be good either. All right, let it breathe for a minute. Okay. Yeah, I'm back to what I didn't like before. So, let's try that. Let me just get it all the way into the next snare hit. Not crazy about it, but that'll have to do. It's closest. Now, I am going to switch back, and I want the hit that's coming up to be part of the new view. I'll go back to the overhead for the chorus. Tonight, 
So somewhere in between that crash and the ride, maybe that'll work right there. It's probably gonna stutter. Probably close enough, but I'm gonna back it up a couple of frames. there let me get that snare hit and the next few bars into that I'm really trying not to do a four bar thing but it looks like I might be to switch to the overhead right there man again I don't want it to be I don't know predictable I don't know what I'm saying but I, I don't there, there's it's just I guess a feeling thing whatever you like do um, I just I, I don't like feeling like it's a well every time I'm doing this it's gonna be this view and every time I'm doing that it's gonna be that view I, I want to mix it up I, actually I want to make it so especially if it's something repetitive like the chorus or the verses of this song. I, I would love to get it to where you get one time through the chorus. I, I want you to be able to see the entire chorus uh, from the left side view once, and I'd love for you to be able to see the entire chorus from the overhead view, because some people are watching these to maybe figure out how to play a song. Whether you're playing it right or wrong, some people will look at your video to see how to do it. And uh, so you want to keep that in mind. You, for the, for the viewer's sake, if there's somebody trying to figure something out, because if, if you're doing this and you're making covers, you've probably learned from other people's, people's covers. And to do that, you got to be able to see what they're doing. So it's it's good for you, and it'll make your viewers happy if they can, you know, tell what you're doing. You don't want it to look like it's, you know, you're burying yourself. That's the only problem with views from outside the front of the kit is that a lot of times it obscures what the person's doing. So it might be a great performance, but if you're actually trying to pick up licks from it, that makes it a lot harder to do. And I'm just going to let that go until it gets to the little break. So I'm going to bring this back in. And switch it back. Nah, should have left it alone. Um, I know I'm going to switch eventually, but I'm not going to try to undo that cut. It's probably 
not as good a place as any. That seemed a little harsh, but that might have been the computer. To switch back there to the overhead and let it ride out to the end of the piece. And I'm just dragging here. There's no point in cutting it because I don't expect to go back to that view. that in between those symbols so that you see each hit in a separate view instead of it being obscured by being in the middle of a cut. There we go. And then at the, for the end, you can just let it roll out uh, and then clip completely out at the very end. I, I typically will do some kind of a fade, but I don't want to do it too early. It's more like a roll off. And now all I did there, there's, uh, if you get to the end of a clip, see that little white thing pop up? That, that's a fade bar. I can grab that and drag it. It's telling me how many seconds it's going to take for it to fade. Like if I do it right there, it'll fade the kick drum out while it's playing. See it. All right, so I don't know how useful that is, but you can use those fades. You can use them on the audio too. Um, and this has a built-in audio editor. This, what is it, Fairlight or something? I, is that what it is? Yeah, Fairlight. Um, I haven't had uh, really good luck with it. I, I'm not about to switch to this. If I had to use one thing for doing both, uh, if I could get the video editing to work in Reaper, I would use Reaper for everything. Um, but I'm just, I, I haven't had good luck with it. I've had, I've had a lot of stuttering hangups and stuff that I don't get here. And there's, honestly, this is, DaVinci's a pretty strong app. It's a pretty strong program. It does a lot of stuff really well. Now there's paid versions that do more, but man, for what I do, you can add subtitles, you can add text, and, and there are transitions, but be careful about it. If you're new to video editing, be really careful about transitions. A lot of people, when they first start making videos, get transition happy, and they want to do all these crazy wipes and dissolves and, and things where it like flips the screen, and makes it look like Venetian blinds and all this. Just that stuff wears on viewers really fast, so just be careful of it. I mean, it's okay in, 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 uh, if you use it sparingly. Just don't go crazy with it. I, I usually do a little bit of a fade at the beginning just so it's not a hard cut, but it's not, I'm not going to, you know, fade in over, you know, 20 seconds or anything. It's going to be a, there. It's, it's barely noticeable. It just softens the start of the video hair. Okay. And so that's it. I don't use any other, tra every other transition I do is a hard transition. Now I will usually, I don't know if it makes any difference at all, but most of the time, since I'm not using this bottom track for this section at all, I will usually go in and cut the parts that I'm not using. Um, I'm just splitting them right now and then I'm going to go back and actually remove them. It, it helps a little bit in playback just to not have the extra material there. It's a little less work for the computer because it's thinking about all those different pieces, whether it's playing them or not. I should have just zoomed out before I started doing that. 
Uh, and not having them there can can smooth out the playback in here. It doesn't have much effect on the rendering or anything else though. So, okay, so I'm gonna clip out using backspace, get rid of those parts, because they're not playing anyways. They're covered up, they're getting, this is what's playing there, right? So now I've got all this stuff here. Uh, there's no need to bounce tracks or move anything around. I can leave everything just the way it is. Um, I've got it kind of the way I want it to be. I'm not going to waste time playing through the whole song again, but we'll just assume that I've got this the way that I want it. So now the next thing I need to do is actually get this into a single video file. So I'm going to go down to the bottom here, this little sp spaceship deliver. Click that, and now it is bringing up, this is all just scenes from the video. Here's all the clips down here and all this. It's not really for editing so much. This is just for you to set it up and uh, tell it what kind of file you want to make. Now, you can use whatever up here that you want to. You can do a custom and set this up how you want it. Um, since my videos are going on YouTube, I've always just used the YouTube thing, and it always seems to work fine. I haven't run into many situations where I... I haven't run into any situation since I started putting videos on YouTube where I made a video and it didn't work on YouTube. Um, so um, I have had that problem with a YouTube video in the past uh, on a different channel with different stuff, but not anything lately. So I'm going to name it whatever I want to name it. Um, sample video. and I'm Sample video, I'm gonna put on my desktop. Resolution is what I want it to be, 1920 by 10 a that's how I record it. I didn't record it in 4K or anything. Now you do have options there, that zooming and stuff, you can also zoom in. Um, and there's an advantage, if you have a camera that'll do 4K and you do your video in 4K and import it in 4K and do your editing in 4K, if you're gonna output HD 1080, um, then you can afford to do stuff like cropping and zooming without losing any of your resolution. Now, if you go cropping and zooming on a 1080 video and then try to stretch it to fit the screen again, uh, you are going to get get a, a rougher video. It's going to be, uh, you're going to lose some of the high definition. It's going to look a little more rough, pixelated, grainy, something. Um, quick time is a no-go. I'm going to do it in MP4. It's just a container. It should play either way, but... YouTube would like for you to use MP4. Uh, the H.264 codec is fine. Stereo, that's your main audio. Everything else here should be the same. All you should have to change is uh, tell it you want it to be in MP4, really. Um, I told it where to go. I told it what I want to name it, and I told it where to go. It's going to put out an MP4 file. I'm going to add it to the render queue, because I need to render it, start render over here, but there's nothing there, so I need to... For whatever reason, instead of just putting a start render button right here, I had to add it to a render queue. Now I can render it by clicking start render, and uh, then it'll go. It'll, it'll take it a few minutes. It's telling me right here it's going to take about uh, four minutes, three minutes, something. I don't know. Um, and it's going to sit here, and it's going to go through, not frame by frame, but it is going to kind of give you some indication of what it's doing. Well, that's it, I guess. Uh, I've just got to let this render, and then I'm going to have a file on my desktop, which is where I told it to store this. Um, and then the next step is just to do stuff you should already know how to do, which is go on YouTube, um, upload the video, set it how you want it, pick your screens, and uh, like I say, I would suggest doing one private if you're not sure about it, if, you, if you're curious. Uh, it doesn't hurt anything to upload it and originally tell the file, tell YouTube that you want it to be a private file, which is that nobody can see it but you. Then you get an opportunity to look at it and watch it before anybody else, any of your subscribers or anything might see it. You can look at it and see if it's okay. Uh, and if you're happy with it, then turn around and make it public. And if you're not happy with it, I don't know if you can delete it, but you don't have to make it public. You can, always, you can try re-uploading it. You can try... Uh, making changes if you need to, whatever you need to do. I, I do generally, when I'm done with something like this, I'll go look at it in uh, Windows Media Player first and just kind of see what it's doing, see, what, see how it looks, make sure nothing jumps out at me, and then I'll go ahead and upload it to YouTube and uh, see how that works. So, so anyways, that's really it, I guess. Uh, this is a long one. This is, uh, I will say that making this video has been, so far, way harder than making the drum cover videos. I hope that you get something out of this. I hope that it doesn't feel like it was a waste of time. Uh, just from how long I've spent on it, I'm guessing it's gonna be a fairly long video. 
Hope you get something out of it. Hope you get something out of it that you can use. Hope that it helps you make your videos better or at the very least, hope it shows you what not to do. If you have any questions or comments or if I left something out or if you need more explanation about something, you can feel free to hit me up in the comments section of YouTube. If you need anything else or you got any suggestions, uh, then feel free to let me know. Other than that, hope you got something out of it. Have a good one.